So this is our lecture for the bacterial cell cycle from April 6, 2020. And the cell cycle is something that you probably talked about in intro biology as well as if you took cell biology. And um, really I'm just gonna highlight some of the differences between bacterial cell cycle and bacterial division um, and eukaryotic cell cycle. So bacteria can reproduce in several different ways. By far, the most common way that bacteria reproduce is through a process called binary fission, which is an asexual reproduction process where one cell, or in this case, one organism, if we're talking about bacteria, can separate into two identical daughter cells or two identical daughter organisms. And since bacteria are haploid or only have one copy of that linear chromosome, one haploid parent cell can generate two haploid daughter cells. And you can see this bacterial division via binary fission happening in the GIF on the right-hand side. And so the process of binary fission is kind of a simple one, especially when you compare it to the cell cycle of mitosis in eukaryotic cells. So the first part of Binary fission involves a cell elongating in shape. Its cell wall gets larger, its cell membrane gets larger, and this is in order to accommodate the two new identical daughter cells that are going to be made at the end of this process. And in addition to having enough kind of cell wall and cell membrane to make two new cells, you also need to have enough DNA. And so that linear chromosome of the parent cell, which you can see in red, replicates during the beginning of binary fission as well. And these two new chromosomes, after they are replicated, begin to move from the center of the cell where they're originally made towards the poles or to the two ends of this new, what will become two new daughter cells. And in addition to this division of DNA between the two daughters, the other cellular components like ribosomes, which you can see here in brown, also need to be divided. And then the physical division needs to take place as well. And so what's known as a septum or a dividing wall begins to grow along the midline of this uh, parent cell. And you can see that invagination of the cell membrane here in pink. And ultimately that septum or that cell wall will continue to invaginate and pinch in and form a complete division between these two daughters that septum can finish growing and it'll divide the parent cell into two new cells. And in most cases, this is the daughter cells that result from binary fission are completely physically separated from each other. However, there are some cases where that separation is not complete. Um, and then the daughter cells are arranged in chains or in doublets um, because the physical division doesn't fully um, finish. And so bacteria can use other methods of reproduction as well. The first is known as budding. Uh, this is specific to bacteria that contain stalks or hyphae. They can grow new buds or new cells at the end of these stalks. There's also sort of a multiple fission. So rather than binary or um, two <laughs> fission where one cell becomes two, there's a multiple fission where one cell can become many cells um, throughout one process, and these smaller cells are known as baocytes. And there's also the possibility that bacteria will form spores and reproduce in that way. All of these methods of reproduction are asexual as well. And the method of reproduction is sort of intrinsic to the species of bacteria. And so it's not like a bacteria that normally will reproduce via binary fission will all of a sudden decide it's going to start budding. Um, these are intrinsic to different species. And so each species has its own method of reproduction with binary fission being the most common. And so the cell cycle in a bacterium is very similar to the definition for a cell cycle of a eukaryotic cell, where the cell cycle is just the complete sequence of events from the formation of a new daughter until it divides again. And the bacterial cell cycle is split into two main parts or stages or pathways. The first is uh, chromosome replication and division or partitioning. 
and the second is the physical division of the cells or cytokinesis. And so while we can kind of learn about these two parts separately, what's important to remember is that in real life, the replication and partitioning of chromosomes is happening in tandem with the physical division or the cytokinesis of the cells as well. And so in order for the bacterial cell cycle to start and for replication of the chromosomes to begin, the origin of replication or that replication start site in a bacterial chromosome has to line up along the midline of the cell. And that lining up of the origin of replication orients that chromosome right directly in the center of the cell. And as it replicates, will allow it to kind of split evenly into the two new dots. So once the origin is lined up at the middle of the cell, the replosome forms, which is just that combination of machinery and enzymes required for replication, they're recruited to the origin and that chromosome can be replicated. And during this process of replication, the chromosomes also begin to partition themselves, right? So, or they're originally oriented in the middle and they have to end up at the poles of this large parent cell so that each daughter has an entire chromosome. And the mechanism that's responsible for this is relatively unknown. And so some of the options are listed here, um, but it seems to be species specific. And so each species seems to use sort of a different method of partitioning or dividing its chromosomes during this step of the cell cycle. And at the same time, as those DNA um, chromosomes are replicating and then starting to be partitioned, there's a formation of what's known as the Z-ring in the middle or along the midline of a dividing cell. And this Z-ring forms from an accumulation of the tubulin homolog, FITZ. So FITZ is a cytoskeletal protein. It's directed to the middle of the cell and it can assemble into a Z-ring, which you can see in the green dots here in the schematic as well as in this green fluorescence in the microscope image on the bottom left. And so you have a cell wall in red of a dividing cell, and then that Z-ring formation directly in the middle. And the Z-ring helps to assemble and recruit machinery to make a new cell wall. Um, in the septum area or the center of the cell, that division wall. And then once the Z-ring is formed, it can pinch the cell membrane in, the cell will constrict, the septum continues to form and the two cells can be divided. And so to look at this all together, um, for both the chromosome uh, replication and partitioning and the cytokinesis steps of the cell cycle, at the beginning of the cell cycle, the chromosome will align up in the middle with the origin directly on the midline. The replosome will be recruited and that bacterial chromosome will start replicating. The two new chromosomes can be partitioned or moved towards the poles as the cell elongates, ultimately separating from each other. And then here you can see invagination of the membrane and the septum is beginning to form. Ultimately, the FITZ Z ring will constrict the cell, leading to two new daughter cells, each with a complete copy of the chromosome. And so there are some other things to consider when thinking about bacterial cell reproduction versus eukaryotic cell reproduction or cell division. So in a eukaryotic cell, you have a plasma membrane that's relatively flexible and pliable and easy to pinch off during cytokinesis. And that cell membrane is the complete outer wall of a eukaryotic cell. But we remember that bacterial cells have another layer outside of that called the cell wall which is made of peptidoglycan, or those carbohydrates. And so in order for bacterial cells to sort of finish dividing and become two complete new cells, they also need to synthesize cell wall along that septum or that division point. And there are specific enzymes involved in making cell wall during cell division. They're known as uh, penicillin binding proteins or PBPs. And one specific type of PBP is known as an autolysin. And so if you think about generating a new peptidoglycan cell wall, 
It's easy to make the subunits, these NAG and NAM blue subunits, but you have to have a way of inserting them into the peptidoglycan cell wall that already exists. And this is what autolysins do. So you can see them here in pink. They can specifically degrade parts of the cell wall, specifically along that midline of the dividing cell, and allow insertion of new NAG and NAM subunits into a peptidoglycan wall in a very specific place. And so autolysins are pretty highly reg regulated because they need to degrade peptidoglycan, but they need to do it in a pretty small way and in a pretty localized way. And so in addition to the generation of a cell wall, some bacterial cells have distinct shapes. Uh, that's part of their kind of, that's sort of uh, dictated by the cell wall and how those bacterial cells get their shape is also determined during uh, the cell division. And so for spherical or coxoid bacteria, new peptidoglycan walls are only formed at the midline of a dividing cell or at the septum. And so you can see the midline of the cell in light brown. New peptidoglycan is indicated in dark brown. And so fit Z or that Z ring is what determines the septum location. It recruits the PBPs and other enzymes that are required to synthesize a new peptidoglycan wall. And all of this happens only in the midline of the cell. And so if you looked at the two new coxoid cells um, after division, what you would see is that there's old cell wall on one hemisphere of the cell and new cell wall on the other, just by nature of where that cell wall is synthesized during division. Once again, this depends on that cytoskeletal protein FITZ. Rod-shaped cells get their shape a little bit differently. So during um, growth before they divide, there's a process known as sidewall elongation where the cytoskeletal protein MREB dictates where new peptidoglycan cell wall is gonna be made. And this happens all along the length of that rod-shaped bacteria. And then once the division steps kick in, FITZ kind of redirects that peptidoglycan synthesis once again to be combined to the center or the septum as it is in the spherical bacteria. And then that new peptidoglycan wall can be built between two rod-shaped cells. So in order for rod cells to get their shape, MREB is responsible for dictating where like new cell wall synthesis is going to happen along the rod and to elongate it and then FITZ is required to build the new cell wall after cell division.